right, good morning. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Well, you're, you're on YouTube watching this because um, God has allowed uh, a lot of the church to be COVID positive. So we went ahead and took a, a week off while everybody's in quarantine. But uh, lessons learned. When you have a fever, stay at home, right? Amen. When you have a fever, stay at home. That goes for the flu, the cold, or anything else, not just COVID. We shouldn't be around one another when we have the flu. But this didn't surprise God. He's got this. And I hope you uh, had tuned in around 11 o'clock on Sunday to watch this so we can all kind of be at church together even if we're in the privacy of our own homes. And uh, let me go to the Lord in prayer right now. You know, Father God, I just claim your healing on each and every one of us. I ask for your healing on uh, each and every home that uh, is uh, tuned in today, Lord, that they just feel your holy presence while we're praying. Uh, they feel uh, the Holy Spirit working in them uh, and healing them. Now, you're the great healer. You're the designer. Our body's perfect in every way. That's the way you made it. So we just ask for you to restore everybody's body back to that way so we can return next Sunday in person and fellowship in your house right here together. Now, I ask you to touch us through this uh, message that we have today, Lord, that we all leave changed for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. The title of the message today is Satan's Plan to Break Down the American People. You know he does. He's got a plan to break down the American people. Satan has had a, a waged war against the United States ever since our founding fathers founded this country on Christian values. Satan has done everything he can to get his foot in the door. And have we, for, have we ever put a, a lot of foothold for Satan? Especially in our political agendas, our social agendas our public education systems, and at our work. Unfortunately, that's reached the point where it's also in the churches and in the homes. Satan's plan to break down the American people's work, in other words. It is working. So there's a warning today God is sending to each and every one of us that there is a war going on and Satan is trying to win the battle. Today, you're going to learn that we need to abstain from the evils of this world so that we can win the battle by drawing closer to God. You know, as I watch the political agenda and watch these people talking about back and forth to each other, accusations going on, it's kind of obvious that you can see there's a, a whole lot of God missing. You know, you look at the candidates and talking about running the greatest world in the country still. And you hear what they say they're going to do. And if you'll listen, you can learn real quick which party is actually going to do come closer to glorifying God with their actions than what party that's not going to. You know, when I hear these people talk, and what really gets me is it makes me go back and think about the Bible study monumental and how we learned that our, our, our founding forefathers based the, the, the laws they hung on Christian values. They believed in one God, the one true God, Jehovah, amen. And he was the sovereign and holy God of our forefathers. And, he, and, and they trusted him to lead them into making those decisions of how we should run our country. Yet that's not how it works now, unfortunately. And like I said, you can do your own research. It won't take you but a few minutes to read the party platforms and see which one has nothing to do with God and in fact calls good what's bad and calls bad what's good. We are living in the end times and there's a whole party that's living up to that. Every person living according to the Bible has a free will to choose to worship God or to not worship God. And we can tell whether a candidate is a true Christian and truly worships God based on their fruit. Period. Based on their fruit. What they believe. Our political parties. <laughs> the two platforms that really count right now. The two that have a chance. Just read those platforms. And you will see. Only one comes close to glorifying God. The other is an abomination to God. And what they claim is okay. 
See, we live in a time where persecution is running rampant in this world and Christians are being killed for being Christians. Across this world, people are dying, literally dying, because they refuse to deny God. And I'm telling you, that's coming to America. I think this election right now is one of the most important elections because we're almost at that brink. The party is reaching a point, one of the parties is reaching a point where God will be outlawed. Better wake up. The church needs to wake up. The body of Christ, that sleeping giant called the church, needs to get out and vote this year. Or you may not have a chance in four more. Amen? This world has become worse than Sodom and Gomorrah, folks. It's become worse. It is sick with every vile thing that can be thought up in the mind of an evil man. Men with men, women with women. It's an abomination to God. Yet it's called okay by a certain party. But it's called an abomination by the other party. One platform calls it an alternative lifestyle. But I want you to know today that it doesn't change things with God. It doesn't change the fact that it's evil just because our, our country has reached a point where so many call it an alternative lifestyle and it's okay for you to do that. That's not what God wanted. And God's not going to change. I've had people, they, they're like, you can't just judge and base your vote on abortion and homosexual agenda. Well, I'll tell you, those two things were really, really, really important to God. And I figure anybody that's voting in the right way for that will be mo more likely to make God-fearing, God uh, seeking God's guidance on anything else. Amen? Leviticus 18 22 says thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind it is an abomination it's the word of god if you're a christian you must believe it whether you like it or not if you're a christian romans 1 21 through 29 this is the good news bible they know god but they do not give him the honor that belongs to him nor do they thank him instead their thoughts have become complete nonsense and their empty minds are filled with darkness they say they are wise, but they're fools. Instead of worshiping the immortal God, they worship images made to look like mortals, or birds, or animals, or reptiles. And so God has given those people over to do the filthy things that their hearts desire, and they do shameful things with each other. They exchange the truth about God for a lie. They worship and serve what God has created instead of the Creator Himself who is to be praised forever. Amen? Because they do this, God has given them over to shameful passions. Even the women pervert their natural use of their sex by unnatural acts. In the same way, the men give up natural sexual relations with women and burn with passion for each other. Men do shameful things with each other, and as a result, they bring upon themselves the punishment they deserve for their wrongdoing. Because those people refuse to keep in mind the true knowledge about God, He has given them over to corrupted minds, so they do the things that they should not do. They are filled with all kinds of wickedness, evil, greed, and vice. They are full of jealousy, murder, fighting, deceit, and malice. They gossip. Wow. Our free country, the most God-blessed country in the world, is run by men and women who have perverted the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is how our country was founded. Yet, we have a party that has nothing to do with this and says that it's wrong. They say what is good is bad and they say what is bad is good. And we need, we need to be crying to our Lord to remove the scales from their eyes. And we need, to, we need to be crying out to the Lord to come and deliver us from this perverse world. And we need to do something about it. You know, my message that said, what are you going to do about it? Well, God's given you a chance to be a voice. And don't let society, don't let your friends, don't let your family, don't let your emotions and your feelings have an impact on what you should do if you, know, if you, have, an, if you have an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one decision. There is only one choice. Amen. And it comes down to, you know, pleasing God. Being obedient to God. 1 Corinthians 6, 
9 and 10. This is the New Living Translation. Translation, Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? That's, that's, that's powerful. That's strong. Those are strong words. It says, don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. What that's saying too, folks, is that, oh, by the way, those that practice this, they entertain it, they justify this lifestyle of being a drunkard, of being abusive, you know, cheating people for whatever reason, and they don't have a repentant heart and ask Jesus Christ to wash them white as snow. Are you getting this? And you, you know there's people out there that have totally justified a lot of this that just was read and that it's okay. How can you vote for somebody like that that's totally backslidden from the Lord Jesus Christ? People have believed every lie that Satan has pumped from his poisonous propaganda for years. That's why we're in the shape that we're in. That's why the church is in the shape it's in. He has pumped fear into the Christian community. He has pumped fear into the church itself, the body of Christ. And he's caused rebellion. He's caused hate. He's caused anger. It's running rampant in the streets right now. Don't you know? People look at the other people and saying they're the ones they ate, ate up like a soup sandwich, but it's, it's, it's Satan working through them. They're puppets of the devil. We should be lifting it up in prayer, praying for the skills to be removed, that the love would be loosed on them, and that they would see through Jesus' eyes. You know, Satan has caused more war in the church than he has on foreign soil. That's why our churches have fallen apart. That's why entire denominations have been impacted by society today and by the political agendas that entire denominations have accepted the abominations of God to be practiced in their churches. The American people have set back and accepted homosexuality as a norm while a heathen nation like Russia has laws against it. They have laws against equal opportunities for such a thing. And it's hidden. Isn't it odd that a heathen nation, not, not founded on Christianity, not founded on the Word of God, has more morals than our God-given country? Tell me Satan is not winning the battle. Isn't it funny or ironic that churches have bylaws against things that they have now changed the bylaws or totally ignore and allow things to go on within the body of Christ that's total abomination to God? Clergy up here flying the rainbow flag. Denominations totally changed. America is living in perilous times. I'll tell you what, we're fulfilling this scripture today. This one right here, Jeremiah 6, 16 and 17, King James says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. America doesn't want watchtowers anymore. As a whole, America doesn't want a, a, a person in the pulpit with, that has authority, that demonstrates authority in the Word of God and stands like this and tells the truth. No, America doesn't want those watchmen. They want a puppet, someone that they can tell what to do and what to say and how to act so that their ears can be tickled. We live in a generation where people want to be their own priest. We live in a generation where people want to have their own rules. I, I've, I've recently had conversations with family and friends and a younger generation saying, I just don't know which laws really apply to whose laws. Some people, this law really applies, but you know, for, for some people it don't. And I just don't know where I stand. And I looked at that young lady and I said, if it's the laws of God, it applies to everybody. It applies to everybody. And what she was talking about was abortion. She was talking about, well, for some people, it, I can understand why it could be. You, you're confusing him. The laws of man does not override the laws of God. And God has already made it clear 
that he knew you before he placed you in his mother in your mother's womb <laughs> so that's the sanctity of life amen there is no there, there there is no question about that if you're a blood-bought saint if you're a christian amen have american people failed to see the signs of the times i mean i'm talking about christians more than anything but when i look at the, just the american dream of the, and the freedom ha, have they just lost have they just failed to see the signs of the times we're at the end times the, the kinds of things that goes on in the streets and is called good but yet we know by the word of god it's not you know false prophets don't have to be backslidden preachers man <laughs> they don't false prophets can come from the white house or the church house and once again we need to start looking and if you're looking to vote for a leader that doesn't fully love God, doesn't fear God, doesn't worship or praise God, and doesn't glorify God with their decisions, doesn't seek God for guidance on what to do, then they have their own agenda. And it's not, it's not godly. It's not pleasing God. America is surely becoming a backslidden nation because of the men and women that we've put in public office. Satan has given us casinos satan has given us lotteries satan has given us abortion satan has given us murder on demand <laughs> satan has given us murder in the churches murder in the schools satan has given us corruption in the government and no one seems to notice the infiltration of the church and the homes our private homes we now have computers that are so sophisticated and we have cell phones. This cell phone is like a small computer. It has more power than what reached the moon back in the day. We have cell phones that have us so preoccupied that we can't lay them down. Not even for two minutes. Do you think that's of God? It's not. It takes us from God. Any time spent away from God is not of God. We can't lay these down long enough to give God the glory. There's people in church looking at Coriel buy, sell, and trade while I'm preaching. Come on. We need to lay aside the weight and sin that so easily entangles us. Amen? Hebrews 12.1, New Living Translation, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that's anything that slows us down. Especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. But we can't stop. We are too addicted to our phones. We got to have the latest phone with the best family plans. Amen? Think about it. We seem to have an urge to stay connected to the world when we should be staying connected to God. We're less connected to God because of the things of the world. People are spending a hundred, two hundred, and I know even up to three hundred dollars for the best family phone plans they can get. And that family <coughs> sits around the kitchen table looking at their phones now. Tammy and I was recently at a home that had eleven people in it. They had traveled from various locations to grieve to mourn and to celebrate the life of a loved one that had gone on to be with the Lord. And 11 people in the house on 11 devices. No one talking. The TV was going. 11 devices. 10 phones and one iPad or notepad. I was, I was looking at that and I, I didn't know I was going to be preaching this message. But there you go. Is God glorified in that? If Satan can give us anything that will distract us from the unadulterated Word of God, from Christian fellowship with one another, lifting each other up in prayer, lifting each other up in just words. I mean, during a time of grief, everyone sitting at the table, six people at the table and five people in the front room looking at a device. Who was winning that battle? God wasn't being glorified. And then there's another $50 to $100 being spent by the same individuals for internet. There's another device being used. Is it glorifying God? And then those same people have the nerve to put a couple dollars, if anything, in the basket, in the plate, 
<clears throat> to give to God. I'll tell you right now, if you're really curious as to what some of your gods might be, little g, in your life, that's taking you from God, you need to look at your budget. And look at where you're spending your money. Some people spend more money on eating out than they give God. Somebody need to hear that. Some people spend more money <coughs> on the internet than they give God. Some people spend more money on their uh, phone family plan than they give God. Hello. Look at your budget. People spend more time on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and I quit looking them up, but you name it, you know, they spend more time on that than anything else anymore. And it's full of a whole bunch of liberal stuff. You got people that are calling people and saying, did you hear this? Did you know that? We allow every vile thing that comes in over the airwaves to show up on our TV screens or to listen to it through the radio. Corrupting our relationship with God. <clears throat> There's no longer any thrill in the preaching. People used to come and they were thrilled. Like right now, I wonder how many people really tuned in to watch this at 11 o'clock on Sunday to kind of be listening with the rest of the family. Amen? There's too many distractions. It's too easy since, since I didn't force myself to get up and go into the church. I just pray that everybody listens to it eventually. Amen? But there's no longer any thrill to the preaching. We are so preoccupied with the inventions of the world that we, don't, we really don't know anything about the Bible like we should. We don't have that intimate relationship with the Lord that we should. And we'll come in here and we'll sing, Oh, how I love Jesus, while we're thinking about what we're going to do as soon as we get out of church. Ready to get back to those worldly things that occupy our time. See, Satan has us figured out. I hope you're getting this. See, because Satan's got a battle going on. And he's got us figured out, doesn't he? He, <clears throat> he knows if we become addicted to anything, if we can become addicted to the worldly things, anything that's not of God, we are hooked on him. See, he's got the foothold on the world. Do you understand? And so that takes you away from your relationship with God. At the minimum, even if he hasn't got you hooked yet, you will not be focused on God. And if you're not focused on God, you cannot build your relationship up more. And all the while that we're shouting, glory to God, glory to God, right? Our mind is thinking about what we're going to do next of the world. We're truly hooked on what? Are we hooked on Jesus? Are we really hooked on Jesus? I remember years and years ago, I used to ask people, are you high on JC? That was a common term I used I'm for many, many years. And it meant, are you high on Jesus Christ? Or are you just high on something else of the world? What occupies the majority of your time? See, here we're supposed to be a Christian nation, so God should be occupying quite a bit of our time. But He's not anymore. We've put him on a back burner. We're sold into bondage. We're slaves to the things of the world. And if you don't believe me, just watch people with their phones and think they're not in slavery and in bondage to the phone when they've got to look at it every two minutes. Yeah. Got to look at it. Jesus said in 1 John 2, 15-17, King James Version. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen? Amen. There are many things which may be perfectly okay. They may be good things. A job's a good thing. A ministry's a good thing. Amen? Hobbies are a good thing. But if they occupy more time than what you spend with God, they've become a God. If it hinders your race of faith, then they are weights that need to be shed off. They must be laid aside. So I'm praying that you, you're getting this today. The things that are distracting you from God. The things that are distracting you from that relationship. People ask me if I watch the debates. I don't need to watch the debates. I know who I'm voting for. 
it's just night and day. There's really no reason to watch the debates because there's nothing that the party that's an abomination of God and practice the abominations of God, supports and promotes the abominations of God, are going to convince me no matter how good they speak. Amen? They could sell used bubble gum. There's no reason for me to listen. But people still do. Maybe that's become your God. Take a break from it. I want to close this morning with a challenge to each and every one of y'all. In two more days, we're going to be starting our fast. It's a corporate Daniel fast. And I would ask you to pray for the next couple days about what it is that you need to fast from. Maybe it is your electronic devices. Maybe it is uh, just watching the news media. Get away from it. Seriously, if you just get into the Word of God, you'll get all the answers you ever need. If you get into an re intimate relationship with God, He'll let you know what's right and what's wrong and what you need to do and what you don't need to do. Amen. And as well as the foods that you might need to abstain from. But pray about it. Let God show you. And then join us on this 21 days. It just happens to end on the 3rd of November. 21 days from October 13th to November 3rd. And we're going to have a big feast and we're going to be praying for God's movement. We're going to be praying for s such a huge, huge showing of the true Christian faith, the real, the waking, the waked up giant that goes out and is a voice for God and shows that this country still is, still is a God-blessed country. That this country is still founded on Christianity. That this country is still going to continue to be run by Christians. The only way to do it is to start now. The more Christians, God-fearing Christians that we put into office, the closer we'll get back to being the country that we were, we were made to be and founded on. The one true God. I pray that you'll seek God's guidance on being His voice this election year. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for a powerful, a short and powerful message. Lord, I pray that each and every person that received this message watched it to the end and they realized the things that they need to move out of their life, the things that they're in bondage to. Pray, I'm praying you showed each and every one of us, Lord, the things that, that we just stay in bondage to way too much and that it, it has an impact on our relationship with you. And Lord, I also ask that you guide us for these next couple weeks, Lord, as we prepare to go and do what we're, we're obligated to do and that is to be a voice at the polls and that we go and vote. And that when we go and vote, our ballot glorifies you. Our ballot will be based on Christian principles, your morals, your scruples. And that it brings glory to you. It's in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.